What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeff, I'm the owner of RDR Gear here in Salt City, Utah. If you're new to the channel, thank you for coming. If you don't know who we are, what we do, let me take a few minutes to share with you on that. We are a soft goods manufacturer. We specialize in plate carriers, belts, canine gear, Kydex holsters, and what, as well as our Safari Land duty holsters, modified holsters, holster wraps, and of course our holster accessories, the tourniquet mounts, tourniquet struts, all those things can be found on our website at rdrgear.com. If you have questions about a current order, future order, hit us up via email at info at rdrholster.com. You can also see all of our products on our social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram. So what's today talk about, not much review, kind of, um, there's a reason I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bipods. Uh, bipods are a thing that I feel really fall into the category of a rifle setup. Um, if you've ever been, I, I have taken a ton of classes, right? Um, it's been one of the blessings of this business and my brother allowing me to travel for the business and do certain things in marketing and meeting customers. And I've had uh, some experience in the past here in Utah where other people had allowed me to come in and kind of uh, sit in on their class and kind of take some notes and, and whatnot. Bipods are part of rifle setup. And if you've never heard of rifle setup, um, if you ever get to Ridgeline Defense and meet Alex Hartman, you'll hear, or Rudy Gons up there, you'll hear those guys talk about rifle setup quite a bit. Rifle setup is the key to getting the results you wish to get when that round leaves that gun. Uh, rifle setup is everything from suppressor to gas to buffer tube to stock, but also on the exterior of the rifle. Um, we've just, we'll post some content, you may see it before or after this video, on risers and how to benefit using a riser. If you're using a riser, you're not adjusting the rear of the rifle, there's some things there, right? So bipods are just as important as everything else. Uh, I have gone down the rabbit hole in bipods quite extensively um, to the point where I've come to the one that I kind of use primarily now. Um, this is kind of, I'm gonna go with you as the iteration of, of where I've gone down. Uh, so this is my very first ever bipod. And this is a Harris bipod, and I forget, I think this is the BR model, but it is not the clicky model, right? And I'll show you the clicky model first, but this is the very first bipod that I ever bought for an AR platform. And I thought that I had the best thing out there until I actually got to a class where bipod deployment was crucial to getting to the ground, getting to a prone position, or using the bipod as a barricade rest, or pressing on or loading into a bipod to get in a position, kneeling behind the cover or improvised uh, position, et cetera. So a couple things when you look at this bipod, you'll notice the legs are slick. There's no segmented slots on the legs. So the bipod works either in this length, which I believe is nine inches, right? Like so. So if you look at that position there compared to, if I have one out here, uh, I don't. But if you're running a 20 rounder, you're gonna be okay. But say you needed to go shorter. Well, if you go shorter, that's your shortest. And now we have issues with the magazines and we have issues with pretty much everything. Getting to the ground, getting behind the gun, this little guy is a little bit tough for certain things. Going down angle, if you're looking downward, maybe a benefit there. Um, up is definitely not gonna help you at all. So when you look at these Harris bipods, this is where I didn't do my research. Well, I did do my research, but it was a money thing for me at the time. I didn't wanna spend more money for the clicky legs. Right, and when I say clicky legs, um, the BRM model. So, that before we get to there, so the BRM is the same bipod as this one, right? But where this one benefits from is having the legs that once you open them, you get the same height as this one, the BR. I think it's the BR, the bench rest, they call it, as the BR, but now with the Mod M, you get the quick legs. If you can see those little segmented portions, right? This allows you now to adjust your bipod height to whatever you may need. 
if you need, if you have a kind of a weird angle, you can adjust there. If you need them flush, you can go back to the standard six inches, but as soon as you hit the spring loaded release, you can adjust them evenly and you're good to go. This one is what I should have bought way back in the day, right? I was telling Crispy, I bought enough bipods that I could have bought two of these or one of for every rifle I own by now. So, um, but this here still has one hiccup and that's the hardware system here and I'll get to that in a minute. So I figured, you know what? Hey, let me jump the shark completely, not get the one that I actually need. And let me go to an Atlas bipod. And this is kind of like the Ferrari Rolls Royce. Well, I shouldn't say that because nowadays there are a ton of other bipods for the PRS circuit that really are the Ferrari and the Porsches of the world. This is kind of like maybe Crispy's Forerunner. It's, it's not quite stock and not quite TRD Pro. It's TRD Pro-ish, right Crispy? So this is the Atlas bipod. They look super cool, um, but they're a bit of a pain in the ass because you need to do a button to make everything work. You can't just yank on them, adjust them, whatever. So you'll see the outer button here. This has to be depressed and the legs can go forward. Now, for the PRS dudes out there or the dude who might be hunting and has a lot of maybe different terrain, you're getting down on the ground and get behind something, whatever, and the rock is a weird shape. Well, you can get this thing to go one forward in one position one back in another position, right? And then now you've got this way to get wedged in there in the rock, or maybe you need it going super low so you got it forward, or maybe you're going at a, at a down angle, so you gotta bring them back and then open them. And then now you've got this kind of different position or whatever case may be, right? There's a lot of different ways to get these bipods to work for you. The bottom here, will rotate and loosen up and it'll now allow you to pan. It's kind of difficult without a rifle on the, on the gun, but now you can pan left to right and whatnot. So the Atlas, when I bought this thinking this was gonna be the best thing out there, when I went to my first uh, rifle class, uh, more of a intermediate scope carbine, this was a bitch. Getting it adjusted in a position before I got there was an option. Once I got to that position, now I had to pull one down and get it squared away, get the other one down to match up correctly. Then I had to fix whatever I wanted to do here. I just didn't like all the buttons and all the features. I also didn't like this because once there was a couple rounds going recoil with there, this would get loose and then now the gun would tilt or it was already tilted. It, I just didn't like the pan system of this here, but it was hard to, you know, if it, on a 16 inch gun or 18 inch gun, it was a little bit tough to reach in the prone position, right? Or kneeling, whatever. So again, and these are not cheap. They're a couple hundred bucks. And it all depends on what system you want. This one here, the Picatinny 1913, is the cheapest of what they make. To get it with the QD mount, like so, on this thing, I think it's close to 300 something dollars. Now, that's inexpensive because there are the Thunder Beast bipods that are like four and change, and it just goes up from there. There are some PRS bipods out there that'll run you 800 bucks. Uh, it, it, it all depends on what you wanna spend. And as I mentioned earlier, you can make these things do whatever you want. You'll see how it's rotating on me though, right? That's what I don't like. That little bit on even pressure turned it. So now I've got to adjust it again. And then if recoil is weird or I'm not behind the gun properly, gun goes off, well now I'm crooked again. Right? That's one of the things I don't like. Even no matter how tight and how much tension I put in that pan head, it sometimes simply just doesn't work. So at the end of the day, the, P the Atlas maybe for some folks, it's not for me, right? So what I found works best is the BRM. And this particular setup is from Badger Ordnance. So if you look at the front end of this BRM, right? And then you look at the front end of this BRM, you'll notice the difference in the front ends here, right? You'll see the pin hardware here 
and then the tension here, you'll notice all that is gone on the Badger Ordnance. These come from Badger Ordnance, and you can get them with all the lever, the pan lever included, as well as the upgraded gut section here removed, and you get the BRM bipod itself. These have been ridiculously difficult to find for a very long time. Um, I gotta give a shout out to Jim's Goon Life. Uh, Jim had recently went to uh, Shooter Symposium with uh, Reston Group and Alex Hartman from Ridgeline Defense. So those guys were there. Alex is the one who turned me on to this as well at a class years ago with Jared Reston in Florida. I had been looking for one forever. Um, Arasaka made a conversion kit that my buddy Chris runs, but when I went to get it, it would have been discontinued. So when I found these at Euro Optics, I ended up getting two of them because it gives a great way to get you on the rifle. And I have this oh, the same setup on the BRM from Badger on the Mark 12. So this is the newest SPR rifle that I've been working with. Um, we're waiting for the suppressor to come from Instructory Arms. But you'll notice how the rifle is canted right now already, right? Once we hit the lever, my cant is adjustable, right? There are more for maybe uh, the hunting type rifle, whatever, but they don't give the same articulation as you do with the Badger setup here. So you'll also notice that without the front stuff here, you'll see some B-roll we did this afternoon in using a vehicle to brace and load that rifle against to give a much more stable platform to shoot from than just simply using the bipod. So if you're, I'm on the gun in, in whatever position I might be in, I can be on the rifle and if I need that tilt, whatever, great. If I don't, I can simply reach up, throw the lever and the gun no longer tilts, All right? So that's a great option there. I can quickly adjust legs left and right side both by staying on the fire control. And I can set that gun up however I want to set it up. And now I'm back in business, I'm back on my gun. It's a much easier system to use than it would be trying to reach up and uh, screw the head or whatever. It's just simply throwing that lever and gives me some articulation, right? Once I get what I need, throw the lever and I'm, and I'm locked in place. This is an ideal setup for so many variations and so many things. If you ever guys get to Ridgeline, you're gonna see a couple things, this, and you'll see this. This is something that's known from those guys. I learned it from them. And what that does in an SPR setup, as you're going to a position, you can reach up, deploy those bipod legs, get on the rifle, get to work, versus trying to grab one Right, because sometimes when you grab these things, that spring is a mother and you have to go two times. So versus getting there, yank one time. The, the little 550 setup is not gonna get in the way. It'll close and you're good to go. And it stays out the way. So that's something, you know, the bipod journey, man, it, it's, if you can see how much money I've spent over here compared to these two, um, I've bought these twice over in the last eight years. Um, granted, this stuff here is never never bad. It's always gonna f have some usage. Uh, another rifle comes into play. I don't wanna take one of these apart, whatever. Um, there's probably somebody in the world who may not be at this level yet and needs a loner. Um, I always take a couple extra with me just in case, pick pieces of pick rail. I take this one with me every class regardless. Um, Pretty much everybody in the world now is running MLOC, and if you're not, you're probably not from this planet. So um, MLOC, this is stupid simple. Anybody can use it. It'll click on anybody's rifle. You're good to go. Um, these two systems here, I think, I still use um, this one for my 22 bolt gun. Um, this one was one that I'll go back to Amazon eventually. Maybe, who knows? I doubt, actually, you know what? I don't think I can return it any longer. I think I've had it too long. But either way, um, they're just great to have around. But man, between this, these two, and the other uh, uh, two bipods I have at home that were too tall, that I bought, I bought, I think, nine to 12s. Those were six to nine is kind of the, the go-to um, for height-wise. Um, I don't really believe you need to have the 
leg option of the Atlas simply because it's going to interfere with your magazine. If you're in a restricted state and you're running 10-round uh, mags or 5-round magazines, sure, having something that allows you to get on the gr gun a little easier, you know, get lower to the ground, you're going to get a super deep prone and your mag's not going to be an issue, you're running a 10-rounder because even a 20, you're pushing, you're pushing the, the limit right here, right, with the 20-rounder with the legs extended. Right, but you could get a rear bag in here. But if you're running five rounders somewhere, California, East Coast, 10 rounders, whatever, um, this could be something you consider. It might fit your needs. But again, I think at the end of the day, save the money that you spend on an Atlas. Hunt the BRM setups from Badger Ordnance. You can look, find these on your optics. Um, you find one, buy one. I promise you, man, it's gonna be a night and day difference. Um, and again, like I said, you can do, they, they'll, they'll, the, the lever is included. Um, so no matter what, you can adjust that tension however you want, give you the, the pan, same thing here. Um, I don't think you're going wrong either way. All right, guys, that's what I got for you on bipods. But if you made it through this video to this point, let me give you a tip on to train your YouTube like this video, comment on this video, subscribe to this channel. It's gonna help you train your YouTube to show you more content like this one, and you're gonna see more things you enjoy watching. And until next time, be well, take care.